wouldn't it? No, Fry. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Happy Monday! <laughs> I really hit my head. Gaslight Castillo. <laughs> you alright? Your little be, noggin, your I'll noggin's good. good. <laughs> You're gonna play hurt. <laughs> how sad how sad would it be if like you were in the studio and I was in the studio and Bryce when he hit his head like knocked himself unconscious and we just had to look at his like sad body yeah. on the control panel as we like try to call and get somebody in to help him and just this not knowing is he brain no, dead? Yeah. Is he dying? We would just be just looking unconscious. we'd be looking at his prone and twitching body on the floor for about five minutes and, before we went to lunch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And and yeah, and then everybody watching us is gonna be like those assholes, like yeah. you know, do something. They're like the we on. we called nine one one. Yeah, napping on the job. I see. <laughs> Hi everyone, we're gonna start the weird things show in, a, in just a moment. Hopefully, the ghost is. If gone. Bryce doesn't knock himself out again. <laughs> Did we find out what the ghost was last week? We didn't. Hopefully it doesn't show up. There again. was a rhythmic thumping, man, uh, and and we didn't know what it was. Level three haunting. There we go. Yeah. Extraordinary evidence revealed on podcast haunters. <laughs> podcast haunters. Um, From David Fincher. Wait, this is not a weird thing. I don't know, unless we want to talk about Secret Invasion. Has any have you seen Secret? Has anybody seen Secret Invasion? Yeah, I haven't watched the final episode. Uh, it stinks. So, like, it's I'm it's shocking. It's, yeah, it's not great. Uh, uh, the entire series isn't great, and it's bothersome because I really like the potential of that. Mm, the fantastic. And all I could all. think of is just how this could be better. Mm, mm -hmm. And I was like, especially considering the acting talent. The acting talent on that show is like stellar. Yeah, and it's just you know it's them just run walking around uh, action sequences we need we need a I, evil aliens i want to hear your take because like mine was like i don't know maybe the writers the directors should have watched like a thriller yeah mystery <laughs> a spy thriller maybe yeah yeah but like i was in a parking garage in san francisco last night with really narrow lanes and i was joking like this was designed by somebody who'd never actually seen a car <laughs> it was like how big is a car you know it's like what this this yeah we got plenty of room yeah. plenty of space it's all good you know sure. or so this was just like yeah you know or the other say like um undercover and stuff and yeah you know, you put a Mission Impossible mask on at some point. So nobody asks questions about why you're the most hunted man in the galaxy. And you just stroll it on through and whatever. And this is the this is like the, a, 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 a an invasion plot hatched in the back of an olive garden. Like almost literally. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just so dumb. I know. With Shooter McGavin. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh, uh, my thought was. Essentially, I'm not saying that the entire series has to be here, but revolve it around essentially like a locked room mystery in the White House and, mm -hmm. and have all these all these actors. They interact with each other. You don't know. Yeah, uh, Fury is your straw that stirs the drink. He knows more about this. He knows that there are scroll elements that he knows are, are throughout the government. But the thing that just happened, the person that just got murdered is like beyond and he now needs to figure it out and and you can have the the climactic moment be a like fury has his gun to a, a character's head that we and he, he he's taking a guess as to whether or not this person is who we I, think they are yeah yes scrolls the, the, out the, my, yeah my biggest crit the biggest failing of this thing was it is neither a thriller or a mystery. There is no mystery. You 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 have this you have this wonderful plot of invasion of the body snatchers, the puppet masters. There's been great sci-fi, great genre sort of stuff. The maturing candidate. You yeah. don't have to know. You don't know, and you know flat out bad guys, good guys. And then it's like, okay, what does Fury have to do? Like. It's there is no effing clear objective. Like there's just and no clear objective. Like. They well, they they didn't even I I don't remember if this came up in that last episode, but they didn't have an answer for the very reasonable question of weren't you supposed to be finding these people a planet? How could you not do that? There are so many pla put yeah. them on Asgard. Like, come on! I know. 
Well, that's no longer or, Philip Reich. The, where yeah, they put it? Too, the Asgardian. Too soon. That was Norway. Price. Yeah, put him in Norway. Put him in Norway. New Asgard. Put him in Finland. New Asgard. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, like, oh, yeah, and then there's a million of them. Like, well, okay, whatever. Wait, what? So, imagine this opens up. Fury gets a call. One of the Avengers is compromised. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not the only one. They Why can't do- you call the Avengers? Yeah. The whole, I got to do this on my own. Like, people have died. Yeah. you mm-hmm. bad at this. People have died. Were the writers proud of themselves when they wrote that? They're like, he's just got to do this one on his own, guys. Like, everybody out of the emergency room. Everybody out of the, out of the operating table. Yeah, I got to do this myself. Yeah. Let's just do this in the middle of a hospital. <laughs> the hospital. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's oh. just so bad. It's just dumb. dumb. Like, I'm... I am sympathetic to writers and stuff. We're worried about AI. I think good writers are going to be fine for a while. Yeah. I cannot wait for AI to handle some of this other stuff because it's so goddamn bad. Like it's, it's just it. And, and you know, uh, to everybody that was involved, uh, this was apparently reshot and re-edited and rewritten at, 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 at a late stage. So the final product was something that got, uh, expensive yeah well i mean and... it, it 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 yeah it was expensive and it got more expensive but yeah. when you look at that cast right sam jackson ben mandelson olivia coleman uh amelia clark uh, uh don cheadle don cheadle yeah like uh, do plays graphic who's great up in the bob marley movie yeah like kingsley benadir these yeah. are all yeah. really 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 good actors kobe smulders that, uh, yeah yeah Dermot exactly Dorduni. like yeah. And, and 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 you know spoilers for the series not everybody makes it and like if if that's going to happen just have that be an inciting incident that that actually has these people interacting with each other and and wondering the key thing about the scrolls <laughs> is you don't know who everybody is and and when you just line them up so they're like oh these are the guys and they have their own uniforms and they're just kind of like soldiers but yeah. they're but they're not scrolls when they're soldiers like when they're just you know people shooting they're not trying to do clever stuff it's like what's the point man like no. I, what, what what are we even doing here and, and i'll just say this super scroll sucks and super scrolls kind of always sucked super scroll is a cool thing that you draw like that uh, i like that scene i like that fight scene i thought that was a it's a fine fight scene, but it's not a thing for which you should be wrapping the the key elements of a scroll story around. Certainly not a six episode thing. It's Certainly. it's just it's dumb. It's 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 like it it's cool. Super Scroll is cool with the Fantastic Four because the Fantastic Four's powers are iconic, and the scrolls were something that were a uh, enemy of the Fantastic Four. It's it it looks visually cool. Yeah, but I, I, beyond I, that, like cool I, you now do this thing i wonder if there was if it was all an some sort of executive paradox of like well we can put well we've got we want to do the scroll story but it's not good enough to be a movie and to make it good enough to be a show it would be too it would be too good to not make it to a movie right like we can have scrolls, but if we make a scroll turn into Avenger and an Avenger, then that needs to be a movie. But we want to tell the story because we need to tell the story because we need to get from A to B. But it, it's just it's I a weird thing. Of, I, of, I don't even know what's happening with Marvel these days. So yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, I don't. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to understand what's happening there because the the version of that factory, that content factory that pumped out things that I think understood and appreciated the 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 core fun elements of the original work is just not in existence anymore. It's just kind of gone. Yeah. Uh, okay. You want to do some weird things now? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Andrew, I'll count you in for our podcast then. You're good. I'm just making, I just want to make sure you're good. And I'm not cutting you, cutting you quick. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. We'll start the Weird Things program in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce, Matt Drummer Castillo, our conductor. Boop, boop. I can't tell what you're doing, Bryce. Boop, 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 boop. Hello, everybody. 
I'm doing like Mr. a drum. Justin Robert Young. What up, friends? Gentlemen, we're here to talk about the continuing saga of LK99. Oh, okay. So we didn't we didn't cover this last week because um I it broke and the only thing I could understand about it was that we weren't exactly sure how uh the validity of all of this. Can can you take us from 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 square one, Andrew? Okay. So, apologize to everybody. I, I will get details wrong. I'm just going to call this out now. I, I may disparage the name of people. I apologize now. I may, may attribute things incorrectly. This is your fair warning. Um, it's a very interesting story because what happened was a group of researchers in South Korea had a paper that apparently got published before everybody signed off on publishing it. And there was versions with different names on it. And in it, the claim was made that they have achieved, achieved a room temperature superconductor, okay? And for, I know everybody's heard this, but I'll do the quick explainer anyways. The value of a, of a superconductor that's room temperature, can go room temperature, is that whenever you put power through a line, through anything, right, it generates heat because it's not completely, it's some of that, that electricity gets converted into heat, and that creates inefficiency. And the more heat you get, actually, the more of your electrons get knocked off, et cetera, and that actually can give you lower, you know, amounts of energy at the end point. So imagine like in our power grid, you have a power plant and you have your house. Your house is many, many, many miles away from that power plant. By the time the power gets to your house from the power plant, there's been a big reduction. A lot of that power has been turned into heat, EMF, et cetera. And so that's one reason why you want to have a good room temperature semiconductors if you could replace all your power lines with it it would make your grid much, much more efficient. It doesn't just end there. You can do things like, in theory, create batteries. There are sensors that use superconducting materials that are kept super chill that have been running for like a decade with one electrical current that's continuously gone through it. They'll use this for like precise measurements, like gravimetric measurements, et cetera. So there are actually instruments right now that have had the same power running through that coil for like 10 years. Jesus. So what you can do there is, yeah, you get incredible efficiencies. If you want to make an electric motor, you can convert far more of your energy into the magnetic field you need for your motor and less into heat. If you ever touch a motor and you feel that heat, that is a big part of that electricity being converted into heat, which is what you don't want. You want that to be converted directly into energy. Mm. It can be applied to things like microprocessors. You can make a microprocessor way, way, way more efficient because if you look at a microprocessor, it is a you know labyrinth of you know wires. It could be you know in, in one microprocessor, you know you could have like I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but not quite. But like you could have meters or whatever. If you think of like how much how much fa- how far electricity has to travel in like a second, and you measure the distance across a microprocessor, it could be hundreds of thousands of miles, like millions of miles, right? right. But if you can reduce that, you get microprocessors that don't generate as much heat. Again, the problem with heat is when you create heat is it creates its own, creates more resistance, and, it's, and it basically lowers your voltage, et cetera. You, lose, you, ba- you, you basically pumping. lose that power. You lose that power to heat like, yeah. in, in so many words. Like, it's, so why, it's, why wireless, it's like why wireless charging gets your phone really hot because it's inefficient, and so you lose some of that heat between mm-hmm. materials. Exactly. And, you know, like uh, you could charge a phone or a car, any you could like you could you could charge a car in a minute. It's the problem is the heat, because that's what if you ever listen to like a Tesla when it charges, you hear this, you hear these blowers because what it's doing is blowing cool air through the battery to keep it cool because as you pump that energy in there. So heat is one of the biggest problems that's caused by resistance. A superconductor with effectively zero resistance is has a lot of potential. And people talk about, you're like, ah, oh, floating trains. Well, okay, that would be cool. But that's not the real reason. I mean, maybe, yeah. I mean, a cool reason. But you're talking about the only, the only industries that will apply to will just be the ones that use electricity. Let's make that clear. Yeah, exactly. You know, so a very niche, niche field. And yeah, only things that use electricity would be affected by this. And so now, so yeah, we, we, yeah we, we have this breakthrough or a, a, a paper that is printed from South Korea, uh, which means it's real. Well, but the, so it, it come out, you know, the story comes out and all of a sudden, you know, you get the, the hot takes from everybody, including me, like, what do you think? Was this real? Is this not real? What's going on? And, you know, it's, it's, I was in high school when Pons and Fleischman posted 
taught, said that they had achieved room. They achieved cold fusion, rather cold fusion, right? Yeah. And they said they these and these were chemists. And the problem right there was when you had the cold fusion thing, alarm bells went off everywhere because the math didn't check out in their paper. There was you should have had a lot more neutrons coming out of it, and and the the hot take was. It's probably instrument error because these guys are chemists, not physicists, and it sounds like that's a mistake there. Something was being observed, but it was probably, you know, just – and there had been for a while, like, what was being observed? And here we are 30 years later, and there were a lot of enthusiasts for cold fusion who kept insisting, oh, it's going to happen. I'm like, I think 30 years is a good amount of time to figure it out if there was something there or not. Yeah. Kind of don't think there was anything there. Here, the difference is – this wasn't a prominent lab, but this was apparently a lab that's doing superconductivity research. There are labs around the world doing this, mixing different materials together, trying to find it out using what other people have tried before and based upon it. It wasn't like a you know uh, an outlier group came up with this. This was people that would be working in a kind of place trying to solve it. So News breaks, the backstory of why the paper got published, who was behind it, whatever, caused a bit of like even more question marks, and then began the race to replicate. And we've had a bunch of smaller labs have been able to try to replicate this, and we've seen some mixed things so far. We've seen what appears to be by some people claiming the uh, the diamagnetic effect where they show this material like flipping upright. And I'm not an expert on magnets. I do not know enough. I've played with magnets. I've played in neodymium magnets, whatever. I have seen effects like that with some materials, like where I bring a magnet in close proximity and something gets caught in a field. This could be that, where basically part of the upper bounds of the material maybe have you know some magnetic properties. I don't know. I don't want to speak to that because I really don't know what we're observing. There. Well, look, I've seen I, examples I, of this material. As you guys know. I'm a huge fan of Chinese social media. Yeah. And while perusing Chinese social media, as I am wont to do, I saw a lab replicating this feat. What now, atheists? <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, and that's, that's the thing, is we've seen now several labs, some smaller labs have come out and have been able to do the same thing with the magnet underneath the material and get the material to go like flip upright. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I don't know. I, I, my personal experience is like, I've seen flux fields. I've seen stuff like this. So I'm not like, it's not like there's an effect that we're used to with what happens in one of the things that can happen. when you create a superconducting material is you know, it's called the, uh, like the, the Meissner effect, which is basically you can put it over another magnet and it will create kind of a, get like a, kind of like a, magnetic locking where it will actually like float over that material not touch one end but actually hover over that which you may have seen examples of that mm -hmm. what we're seeing here is they put the material onto a magnet and a part of it flips up or whatever what does that mean i don't know because it's not the same as what i've seen before and what it's really hard to see we're getting people like very quickly kind of showing us examples of what they're doing in labs and part of the problem is this material seems to be very hard to replicate Mm -hmm. Now, what's happened, too, though, is that there have been other labs that said, well, let's look at the theoretical underpinnings. Apparently, a prominent U.S. lab went in and said, hey, the, on, a, on a, an analytical point of view, when we run this through our computer simulation, this could be a candidate for a superconductor. They're like, this is not some wackadoodle thing. Like, this could be an area. Of, some people said, like, we don't know if they found it, but this would be an area to explore because it yeah. seems like there is promise or potential there. Mm -hmm. Which there are betting markets. There's all sorts of stuff. People trying to weigh in on this. The problem is, is that the amount of expertise that really can sort of quantify what's going on here is very limited. And also, you will get people trying to measure stuff on very tiny samples, mm -hmm. and the error rate is so high that it, it will be, you know, be hard. It's it's funny because like on some of the news sites I go to, like our Hacker News and stuff, they're like, oh. You know, these small labs are jumping to it, but the big labs are just too slow and bureaucratic, and they're not out there trying to do it. It's like, well. Or maybe they have checks to catch. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, maybe, maybe they're trying to do this methodically. Like, I guarantee you, everybody who is involved in superconducting is looking at this, and I'm sure way more many people are trying to do this procedure. So uh, we, we don't have, um, you know, for me, like, I mean, you want us to have multiple, like, if you look at the betting markets, they want to have, like, two labs need to kind of, like, both say that they've been able to successfully replicate this. You know, for me, would be, I mean, if I saw some dude, just some, some like, particle just, like, float up 
you know, completely float, that'd be cool. The problem with these samples is that it may be capable of that, but these samples may be just so imperfect. Yeah. There's some theories that have come out that it might be, you know, a directional superconductor and basically it, it flows along one plane, whatever. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of these little things where baking this material, whatever, it seems to be very hard to do. We just don't know yet. Well, and let's make this point. Win, lose, or draw, this is science, right? <laughs> like, like this yes. is this is what this is the process. And and you should come into it with the idea being that you are skeptical until you see not only proof, but replicable proof that, that can happen uh, 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 repeatedly and consistently. And, and, and I think it's very, very exciting. I'm glad that we've, uh, uh, have a story like this out there. I, I hope that we have uh, a, a good and healthy scientific, <laughs> uh, 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 chronicling of this. Uh, uh, let me just say that in general, our science journalism has been poor. <laughs> it's been weak. We, it's yeah. not great not friends, great. not great, but uh, I think that this one, uh, the, the conversation around it, I'm actually heartened by, cause I think it is fairly healthy. Uh, the, uh, and I, I, I'm also uh, uh, out of my depths on this, but one of the things that seemed strange to me uh, was a takeaway that uh, even though folks are having some difficulty recreating and replicating this process, that the actual formula or the, the, the recipe to make this is supposedly uh, simple. It's, it's, there's not as much bespoke elements that you might need. Um, uh, that that's a very broad understanding that I got, but would, would the simplicity of something like this uh, lend itself towards the idea that it is m more likely to be true or more likely to be uh, a, a, an incorrect procedure or something wrong? Like is, is, is simplicity a good sign or a bad sign here? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, you know, part of it is that, that yeah, the, the ingredients seem to be pretty simple. The method in which they're made, how the substrates are created, everything else seems to be like it may be more complicated. Um, and it, you know, it is a the it, you know, it. I mean, the, it kind of comes down to there are three there are three things. You know, one, it's just nothing. Everything they're observing is just just you know, poor analysis, whatever. The diamagnetic diamagnetic effect we're seeing is just because it's actually just a flux effect. Where basically part of it is just responding to the magnetic field and flipping up. Whatever it might be that um, you know, in magic, there's ways we make paper clips appear to stand on end and pins and stand on end. It's where we put you know by the weight of something and how something gets repulsed by magnetic field. And it could be that like one end of it is basically affected by magnetic fields and the other end isn't because it's just because it's an impurity effect. It could just be like. There's there's a world where yeah that that material is not uniform. It's at that end. It's more concentrated with the meta metallic particles. We're seeing a flux thing. I don't know. I really again, and I do not want to step outside my lane here. I don't really have a lane. So that being said, so theory one is it's just instrumental error, procedural error, whatever. People are looking at a material and watching an effect that's just perfectly explainable. Uh, explanation number two is it has some weird properties we had not seen before. It's displaying some sort of material, some some aspects of superconductivity that we have not known before, and it sort of falls outside of what we understand about it. Uh, three could be the real thing. You know, chances are it's number one. Chances are it's number one. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but, but it's it's good to be hopeful. Hey, this is the this is the part where we dream. This is the dreaming part. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all we can kind of do is, is wait. And well, yeah, hope that I, I, I would actually say the dreaming part is what we want. That happens consistently. We always want this. We can we think about, dreaming. we can think about the population. Oh, <laughs> we, should, we should put that on a t-shirt. Uh, uh, what the point we're at now is replication. Like be great if it was, but this is the fun part about science when it's done. Well, is that we are thinking more about what we can do and less about why we want it. And, and that's where I think uh, uh, things, not only in our conversation, but also in our institutions have sometimes gotten their wires crossed. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, my, my guess is next week, we're going to have a pretty good idea. I think we're going to have a, a very good idea about 
Yes, because it's hard because you look at this, like now we're looking at a video showing this, a magnet moving something from underneath it and the material sort of moving along. And it, it's, you know, some people said like, well, graphite can do that. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm, I haven't seen anything that makes me go, well, that's clearly that's it. a superconductor. And, right. End of the day, the real, key, the real test is, you know, put some wires to it. But there's been some interesting stuff. We had one, you know, one research organization said, yes, this looks like it'd be a positive. This, this, this could be a candidate. Somebody else said, you know, if you put copper in at a certain level, that might actually make it work. It's, there is, there is no physical reason why you can't have a new room temperature superconductor, right? There is no reason why you can't. We've, we've observed, we've been able to raise, we went from having these things being theoretical to putting things, cooling things down to liquid helium. And down where like the liquid nitrogen level to be able to make them superconductors. And so that's why there's so much effort to find this. And it could be there's enough energy in, in this that maybe this won't pan out, but maybe within a year or two, maybe we do get it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it you only kind of need one uh, kind of crossover event like this to inspire other scientists, other researchers yeah. to inspire the, 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 the people, right? If people are talking about superconductors, then suddenly the attention on that, that corner of the industry looks more appealing. Maybe there becomes more money, more grants like that. Like, like, like hmm? yeah, like many things, it's a numbers game and, it, yeah. and if, if it, is, if it can be done and it is a matter of just coming up with clever ways to combine materials to get to it based upon some theories, then it's a matter of the more people doing those experiences, the sooner it happens. Um, and I think that I think that we may actually see. It wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden, you know, very soon we see like an entire new startup that's created for just specifically trying to like do like Manhattan Project level super accelerate trying to find something like this because. A lot of this research is being done, you know, by small labs around the world in different places doing, you know, working at the pace they do. But it's funny because everybody's like, well, if we had this thing, then – and the government – you know, we fund – the U.S. government's fund, you know, this sort of research. But that's not necessarily we've, – we've been funding rocketry for years, but we use <laughs> SpaceX. So Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's exciting. You know, we'll see. And it, it's exciting too because it's like – uh and I will defend some of the tech journalism on this, which I'm hesitant to do, but this is not enough to go on. And it is a very top, difficult topic to wrap our head around. And expert A and expert B may come from different points of view and stuff. And so, mm. you know, and part of the problem, too, is tech, you know, science journalists have a problem is that, like, you know, they get, they, their go-to person who likes to be the go-to person will pontificate. And, and I've seen this a lot, like, oh, we went to so-and-so. I asked them, like, why did you ask that person? This is not their field. Yeah. They just want a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting. It it feels like, I don't know, from a layman's perspective, we could be on like a breakthrough, right? If you get superconductors, mm -hmm. it could suddenly mean your phone is like 10 times faster. It could mean your computer doesn't have to deal with power efficiencies or is, is suddenly, I got I, 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 it's, 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 I can't even imagine because it seems like it's a, a it could be a very fundamental breakthrough. Yes, that is true. Yeah. And I, I, we'll I follow it, this it process. Warrants, yeah, I think it warrants all the attention. Trust the and process. And it's funny because because we had like a couple weeks ago, you know, we had this testimony for Congress about UFOs and stuff. And pretty much anybody with any common sense is just like, yeah, that's bullshit. There's biologics. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, There's biologics. Uh, uh, biologics. Andrew, we've, we've captured biologics. Mm -hmm. I am proud of the interwebs and whatnot for people treating those with the appropriate kind of. And then a week later, this story comes up and we want to talk about this. Of course, people are like, oh, but you see, this is this is it's alien tech. Yeah, this is how they leak it to us. If they, you know, sure. they do this like okay, it's cool. It's it's funny that that there's become a trend. A trend. I don't know. It, there's a we are talking about these UFO things, but. The more that I see people talk about it, especially like in comment sections or um, I guess in, in comment sections yeah. a lot. It's, where where uh, the seedy <laughs> underbelly comment section that Bryce finds himself yeah. in. Uh, but but even there, everyone is like, 
oh, the UF, they're trying the UFOs. They're trying. They're using that to distract us. What are they distracting us from? Oh, or were they using the UFOs to distract us from this? Like it's become a thing where the the skepticism over over UAPs, UFOs, is so bold and so um, not postmodern or post ironic, but we're just on this next level of already being skeptical of UFOs, not because aliens are a statistical unlikelihood, but because we it's based on trust. It's all about like a government black flag. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's weird that that's where uh, our, our take on aliens has become over the years. It's just, it, yeah. we, we know this is a flare. This is just a distraction. Well, I, I mean, they're distracting you, Justin. I, I, the, what, what's what's amazing about that argument is how many different diametrically opposed political groups uh, uh, agree with it and then don't agree with what they're being distracted from. Like, there's, there's, <laughs> uh, it, it is, it is truly, truly remarkable. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that the UAP uh, breakthrough which effectively boils down to a guy told me that other guys saw a thing, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, if we're, if we're really just breaking this down, like even just, this is like day one of journalism school of like credibility of sources. You want firsthand sources or the evidence yourself. That's what you want. So if the guy is saying, I know a guy who has seen a thing yeah. That's not if you brought that to an editor. I don't, I don't know, maybe these days, but back in my day, if you brought that to an editor, they'd be like, "Stop it!" Yeah, I can think of one pretty big story, Justin, where that was the level of credibility there. Oh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> anyway, here's the level of credibility that you need in your life to be a patron of this program. Yeah, Patreon.com/slash Weird Things. Uh, you can be the guy who tells a friend that you saw a thing, and that thing was your patronage of this show. For which you get our After Things podcast early, you get our subscriber-only Discord channel, mm -hmm. and you get our RSS feed with no login. Baby, you just put it into the podcatcher of your choice, and it's humming like a superconductor. Sometimes it breaks, but you just have to re-enter it. It's fine. You never have to log in ever again. That's the promise we give to you. Patreon.com. Slash weird. Things. Also, just right, very quick, uh, just a very quick Patreon thing. Just heads up: if you believe that you're a patron of the Weird Things podcast, check out Patreon.com/slash Weird Things and make sure you're still one. The Patreon had some hiccups oh. the other day. Oh god! And uh, no, yeah, they sent it around to everybody, and they're like, "Hey, a dispute with one of our payment processors might." So just every, check, just check and make sure you're still one. Basically, like every month, uh, for the first like three days of the month on Patreon. Uh, every creator's numbers are a little bit lower than they are actually. And that's because the payments are going through. Some people have to re-up their credit card or enter it into a new credit card. There's a lot of different uh, uh, technical, boring financial reasons for that. Yeah. Apparently, another boring financial reason was some kind of dispute with uh, a payment processor. So uh, go double check to, for, for all your patrons, for all your Patre Patreon needs. Yeah. Uh, go check and make sure that everything is uh, kosher. Here we go. Gentlemen, I have a puzzle for you to solve. Oh, oh, I love puzzles. Are you ready for this one? Yup. Ready for it. Yup. Um, I mean, it might be super easy. I want you to imagine there is a work vehicle, like a, a for hauling materials and stuff like this, like a like a sprinter van or a pickup truck. Yeah, whatever, something like that. Okay, and it's powered by electric. Mm, yep. and it has a battery mm -hmm. and it's been running for like 10 years and they've never had to charge the battery what what and this is only this is not a hybrid like there's not like a secretly a gas tank in the back of it not secretly a gas tank <sighs> uh okay is the battery full of souls <laughs> is it a soul battery? Is it made of souls? Have they gotten the souls, wayward souls, who have business left unfinished, but now they're in the back of this Hugo? That's my favorite Elden Ring weapon. <laughs> <laughs> the soul battery. The soul battery. It, so then, is this a self-propelled vehicle? Like a... A self-charger? A perpetual motion mach machine, if you will. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's really good. 
um, like a like a bike, right? Because they're they're they've got bikes that have like power assistance and the the you know people pedaling it. Is that what you're saying? Y- yeah, uh, yeah, f- no. yeah, Flintstonesy. Yeah, wait, no, you no. could do that if you had like if it's even no, if it's like a two. Can't. No, no, no. <laughs> it's swan swan boat technology. Just put swan boat technology in the cars. That could turn a turbine and create a little bit of power. No, go ahead. If you follow got, this one, if you've got momentum going, you mm-hmm. still you run things like a, an alternator yeah. to recharge the battery. Maybe yep. it was a gravity braking tra- um something like that. Am I describing a it, physical impossibility? Yes, you no. are describing <laughs> you a physical a impossibility. Of things, yeah. You just start at name and a bunch of things. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to figure out a vehicle that has battery power. No, because even even those like uh, power bikes are something that are very very popular these days. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of them, mm-hmm. and you still need to charge them, oh, even okay. though you are even though you are 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 pedaling a lot. I see. I, I didn't know. Um, okay. Look at this, Mr. Regular bike <laughs> over here. Well, so if it's right, 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 a gas powered, <laughs> that's right. It's not even a motorcycle. What? It's no. a regular. <laughs> he has a gas powered penny farthing. <laughs> Okay, so uh, well, what? Okay, well, then what are we doing here, Justin? Like, are we, is there even an engine in this thing? I'm assuming there's an engine, right? Electric motor, an electric, an electric motor. motor. Yeah. So no, what what I'm assuming they've never had to charge it, but that we we are we are guessing. Well, all right. So never had to charge it means. My initial thought was like that there is some. They charged it once. We'll just say they charged it. They once. They charged it once. Okay, but it that's that's still so. How much, much that... are they driving this thing? Oh, yeah. Because um, if they only if this is like a snowplow and they only use it once a year, no, it's still that'd be a pretty crazy battery to hold. Wow, <laughs> hold a charge for that long, but. <laughs> um, I mean, it's going like like a daily miles. driver. Yeah, it's 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 doing a trip like like twenty times a day, going several mile like what? a mile or so or something. Okay, so it does get used a lot. So this doesn't. So this means this is not those like uh those zero mileage Teslas that they found in China. Wait a minute, are they driving this thing on solar freaking roadways? <gasps> no, no, they're Remember not. Remember that? They're not. Remember solar freaking? My God, roadways? my God. dumb idea when it just. Yeah, that was like the first, the first test of how far. As soon as that was announced, like I could tell how far each of my friends got into science. By their response <laughs> when they got to that. bored, when they got bored with science based yeah, on how yeah, excited yeah. they were with solar freaking roadways. Yep. Yeah, they're still trying. Um, okay, so they use it a lot. They use it a couple of miles. So some pretty short utility tricks. Right, we're talking about hauling things. Is it really, is it really big? Is it like crazy big? The battery we're talking about, or the vehicle, or the whole vehicle? Is it like a, one of those mega vehicles? What are we thinking Optimus Prime level? Yeah, are we talking Optimus? Is it Optimus? Is it data come from Cybertron? Is it all OP? It's bigger. <gasps> bigger. Bigger oh. than Optimus, my guy. What the hell? Is it a ship? Oh. It is the wheeled vehicle. It is the world's largest electric vehicle. World's Maybe. largest electric vehicle. Is there an electric monster truck? <gasps> the Redeemer. <Yeah>. Ah! <laughs> um, hmm. The world's. Lo- I mean, so are we talking about like a? I mean, it wouldn't be like a like a tank or anything. Right? Is it some construction equipment? Maybe. Yeah, could it be a caterpillar, like a an electric caterpillar? It's a dump truck. <gasps> oh, oh, okay. It's a dump truck. It's the world's. See, it's it's one of those big machines. I think it's I think it's one of the big Optimus Primes. It's one of those ones where you get a VHS tape of just them doing stuff for your kids. Just one of those. Uh... It weighs forty five tons. <gasps> God damn. And so it's never is is the battery just big enough? How how does it not ever need to be recharged? 
Well, I, I, we may have mixed our words a little bit precisely there. Okay. It's called the Electro Dumper, or E-Dumper for short. I love it. I feel like uh, don't, my, don't, 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 don't it, find it, that in it, your it, search it history. That's my new TikTok. Handle. It's used for moving rock out of a quarry. Okay. At the top of a mountain. <laughs> so they do they do do recharging they do do gravity recharging huh so yes they <laughs> they haul this thing they fill this thing full of rock That's it goes amazing. downhill oh. charges the batteries <laughs> as it goes downhill they empty the rock because now it's much lighter there's enough energy to get this <gasps> thing back up to the top of the hill <laughs> and then they just put more rock into it that's that amazing rule. you said i was just saying stuff yeah. you said i was you just saying you were just stuff. saying stuff no, that you, was were all just right. saying you were just stuff. saying it was stuff. all right protons made of matter optimus no, prime you had real charge breaking <laughs> for the record me saying optimus prime cracked this case wide open okay yeah. You you talking about I, your crazy bikes? Yeah. Well, the, you talking about your, your your perpetual motion machine penny farthing was nonsense. <laughs> no. As they, soon as I got I in was, here with the serious science talking about Cybertron, we cracked this thing wide open. I was exactly. Now correct. imagine what happens when you I set this steel trap of a mind to LK ninety nine. We're gonna be billionaires. <laughs> so the E E dumper, how you said that this has been around for ten years. Ten-ish years? Yeah, it's been working for like decades, apparently. Damn, it's where business, where is you it? Know, minding his own business. Where where where? If we were to take a field trip to pay our respects to the e dumper, uh, uh, where 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 would we be headed? Switzerland. Switzerland, Switzerland. huh? Okay. Uh, uh, well, that is uh, well, what, what the, that, that's that's a that's a hell of a mystery. Wow, a hell that's... of a mystery that we solved right here. On this show, that's that's really cool. That is, uh, that, no, that is that is rad because when you actually think about that kind of stuff, as much as we uh, rightfully made fun of Bryce's stupid <laughs> idea, uh, uh, if you are thinking about how to uh, a use case in which you could recharge by way of motion, yes, it would take something that steep. Yes, it would take something <laughs> that heavy. Yes, it would take hauling rocks that you are mining from a a very very high place. Sorry, that all but sounded exactly like correct. That but is, it's possible. It sounds and, like and it is and it has happened here. So you know, good good do good to know. Uh, uh, it appears that we're getting some sort of uh, uh, transmission from beyond. Uh, hello, I've returned. Uh, <clears throat> a a uh, uh, this is uh, the ghost. Of Brian Brushwood, uh, which will remain a ghost because I don't we have were, a camera. We were told we were told that the ghost wasn't here. showing up, so yeah, the camera no, wasn't it, set it, up. It turns out the ghost well, was very efficient camera, at his obligations. Uh, well, we are very excited for you to be here, as we are at Pix. Uh, oh, oh wait, got one more story for one you. One more story. Okay, okay. I think we found the place to look for aliens, everybody. Uh, not that guy's friends place. That talk to Congress? No, nope, no, nope, oh, okay. no. Nope. At the same time that came out, I think we found where to look. I think we found a very, very prominent clue. Then afterwards, we're going to feel very stupid for not like going, well, there, obviously. Imagine you're an alien civilization and people are asking, like, am I alone? Am I alone? Right. And, and you want to you want to reach out to other alien civilizations and maybe you pick up some Earth broadcasts. Maybe you have FTL because it's kind of the only way to be able to pick up an Earth broadcast, given where this is. Point is, what do you do? What do you want to do if you want to tell people, like, I have the answers here? Oh. The answers for finding... Finding the aliens? Aliens or communicating Are with you aliens? alone? Whatever. You know, I mean, in 2001 Space Odyssey, they put a monolith on the moon, right? Yeah. We uncover this monolith, we find this thing, and it's like it was like a big finger pointing here, here. You had to reach a certain level of technological sophistication to detect the monolith. Dude. So basically what you want is some sort of clue to tell everybody... Or tell Earthlings in particular, this is where answers are. To a to a lighthouse, right? Yeah, yeah. To something that's kind of a flashing light, maybe something where yeah, it uh, flashes it, at at a random interval, so it doesn't seem like it's like a lost satellite or something. Or I, I, I and, and this is not perfect because it it doesn't go all three sixty degrees, but you know, a series of uh, giant things that block that 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 you know, I don't know, cause. Uh, they rotate around a star, and so anybody looking at that star notices that like prime numbers are flashing at them because these giant blocks are blocking it in an order or something. These are great ideas, but they're just too damn subtle. Oh, 
uh, uh, how about, how about, how about a blow sign some off stuff the, up? Yeah, how about a sign off the side of the interstate for a good alien time call? Okay. Put a, put a flag put in the back of my truck. If you put symbol on there, what would you put? If you could put like a symbol. The little gray, the, a gray. You'd put yeah. the gray teardrop alien head on it. Yeah. But he's winking. It's good. It's good. Good suggestion. I mean, uh, uh, I, yeah, something too practical would be like, you know, the shape of a hydrogen atom or something. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like may, maybe it should be the, uh, uh, the, the girl smirking while the fire is behind her meme. Mm, that's good. That's good. These are all good ideas. I think if we may tailor made it, if it was directed at Earthlane, something Earthlanes would recognize and go, oh, oh, the answers. Well, radio signals uh, are a, are a big thing we keep an eye out for, right? We keep an eye out for if someone's just sending us direct. Oh, we're looking for symbols here, oh, physical symbol. symbols, physical symbols, something that says answers. The answers are here. The answers are here. Yep. Maybe a big a big arrow, a big lighted up arrow that says "Eat at Joe's," <laughs> and then an asterisk like on that. the back like of it that says that. "Joe's are aliens." <laughs> um, you know what? Um, it should be an affiliate code. There we go. <laughs> That's a, because then that way the mo- message propagates itself. Use code Grays. Everybody, everybody downstream is going to get ten percent oh. up up to you. I upstream. mean, this could be big. Uh-huh. Getting rich. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are all good suggestions. These are good suggestions. Maybe I like a, close to it. A, 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 an, inter, an intergalactic concert. It'll be so loud, no one will be able to uh, ignore it in space. Only everyone can hear you rock. Yeah. Hey, hey I like that. Uh, these are all great suggestions, guys. They're all very close to it. Bryce, okay. Are, 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 are they meant to, to be a universal message or targeted at Earth? At Earth. Okay, so if you're else. targeting at Earth and it, what you want to do is really flex that, that you've got this under control, you take, I don't know, 20 different stars and you build mega structures around each of them and you time them so that, uh, uh, you know, adjusting for light inflation, they all just flash on and off in almost like a record player, and you send a message that way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, who could miss that? Like, remember that day that 20 stars started turning themselves off and on, Mm -hmm. and then we put it all together, and we were able to hear the Bee Gees? (laughs) That's a good point. Might be, I, I don't quite have the budget to work with that. I don't quite have that budget. All right. You know, what about I, I like your plan. One, one million bags of sun chips. Yeah. And then Ooh. the sound will just naturally crunch. Ooh. Hold on. Crunch, what, crunch, 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 wait, crunch. Or what if you threw a whole bunch of copper into a bunch of stars so they all went green for a second? Yep. You're like, got him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but we'd be like, oh, the copper cloud went in there. We'd explain it away. You need, I, I want concrete. Uh, explain this one, Earthlings. Nude Price alien doing the Macarena with his job. Bryce, you want to show them? Yeah, uh, we've got the image here. Uh, riddle ah, me this. No way! We've got a, uh, uh, is this a galaxy cluster that is in the shape of a question mark? Stars. They're just, they're stars. stars. <laughs> wow, that's it. We got to head there. Riddle me this, Earthlings. Yes, there it is. <laughs> it's a giant question mark. Like wow. Like glowing stars. It's, it's, and it's faced the right way, unless they flipped it, like, oriented. I mean, we don't know who knows up, down, whatever, but, like, it's a question mark. <laughs> it's a question mark. That's it's like, amazing. It would be, like, a, it's, like, 1,500 light years away, and, like, we could, I could see us spending the next 1,000 years going, are we alone? Are we alone? And find an issue of, like, dude, bro, we, like, did the question yeah. mark for you. What more do you need? I mean, the, the only way this could be better is if, instead of a question mark, it was an interrobang. <laughs> like... WTF, bros? Well, like, what happens if like we this? don't show up in the next 30 years? Yeah. That's when they all throw of a sudden up. an they exclamation throw up point exclamation shows up. Point. Yeah. Wow. And then another one for each 30 years we don't make it. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then like uh, 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 a uh, new, new galaxy who dis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, wow. It would be funny if we found out that a lot of these things were just like, you know, like, all half of astronomy was explaining away all of the things that other civilizations left behind us, like pulsars and magnetars. And they're like, no, they're all made by aliens, guys. They're all made by aliens. And we just developed this convenient theory to explain them away and avoid aliens for every possibility. 
Wow. I love the idea because almost certainly the way you would do that would be to deploy an army of like uh, next level, you know, sentient robots to do your bidding. But then meanwhile, biologically, your society would move on and forget that they ever did that. And then <laughs> imagine like people show up to your intergalactic concert and they're like, oh, so good. And they're like, oh, uh, yeah, that sounded like that's a good that sounds like us that sounds good <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's okay you go to an alien concert and you you're the first impression is a is a lukewarm first impression on the on the show oh Basically. no no, no. E everybody's yeah. amazed by it it's just like but your generations past when you know whatever your great 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 grand uncle mm -hmm. was it pushed it through congress that well, we need to do this concert to attract aliens and then the aliens show up and you're like oh yeah i do remember that yeah oh well, so we were in a we were in a different headspace then <laughs> We were, wow. we were doing we, we were doing this whole like role playing going across America and apocalypse thing back then. That was yeah. uh wow. Uh we we there gotta we go. go there. And that's the James Webb uh, deep space image of the uh, Riddler's home planet <laughs> and uh the fact that we need to get out there ASAP. Riddle on. Riddle me this. Uh hey, hey, how about this? Uh we riddle ourselves some picks. I'll Pick start. It Pick it up. All right. What we do in the shadows. Mm. Oh, boy. New season. They're still shadowing each other and other people. Mm. Uh, these, these rowdy vampires, uh, my wife and I caught up on, the, on, on this season last night. Good stuff. Just, you know, I don't know. It, it, there's, in this age of streaming where there's so much content, boy, do you always value the stuff that is consistent. And what we do in the shadows I is very consistent. Here's here's my take. Uh-oh. I would not want to be a person in 2023 on Earth and to call myself... I wouldn't be able to call my experience pretty well complete if I wasn't watching Righteous Gemstones and what we do in the shadows. Yeah. I, I agree. Like It's like, I like sci-fi. Have you ever seen Star Wars or Star Trek? No. 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 Eh, do you really like sci-fi? Yeah. I like to laugh. Do you really? Have you watched these shows? Well, and and both of them are such great examples of like they take their world really seriously. They are both in mm -hmm. heightened worlds, but they don't make fun of them except through the characters. The characters are are weird, but they're never making like the the world itself is real for the characters, even when there's like little meta winks. They're never the 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 thing that takes the full story. So it's like. We we you know, there there's a running theme in this what we do in the shadows uh, season that is totally wrapped around the lore of vampires. It, it is a genuine mystery that would be a mystery if you were to take it seriously and make it a drama. Instead, it's a hilarious uh, you know a half hour sitcom. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like in what we do in shadows, like the thing that spoiler comedy is hard. Yes. And and you can tell we were talking before about Secret Invasion. Like, yeah, it's it's got to be hard to try to write a mystery thriller TV show if you've never watched or read it. A mystery thriller. or thriller, <laughs> thriller. Yeah, if you don't know how a spy thriller works, why it's called a spy thriller. Uh, in comedy, when you have when you watch stuff that doesn't work, because like you have in what we do in shadows, like you got these vampires who are real in their role. They are real in the world. Now they are weirdo looking. When they walk out in public, yeah, people are like, these are weirdos. But like you, if you saw a rock band in full getup walking around, be like, these are weirdos. Not yeah. like, you know, these are, you know, wow, vampires are real now. It's like, no, look at these weirdos. I think that's the difference is that they are, you know, eccentric within their world, but they are not like, you know, it's – I had a discussion with my wife about whether or not something that happened kind of broke the continuity of it. And I'm like, no, this absolutely keeps the continuity of it when – something almost magical happens in front of a lot of regular people. I'm like, they've established they hypnotize. Yes. Whenever something weird happens, like he'll hypnotize like 
Nandor's hip sized entire basketball team. Well, that's what I was about know, to say, yeah. like entire stadiums. That was, that was the, 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 uh, uh, yeah, the, the funny, uh, to spoil one beat from the first episode of this season, Nandor trips walking down the stairs going to a basketball game. So he walks to half court and hypnotizes the entire arena <laughs> to not remember that he stumbled down the stairs. Yeah. It's it's so good. I don't so, know. I I feel like I had doubts about the last season of what we do in the shadows, but so far the the episodes this season have uh, uh, been great. They've been really solid. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, uh, you know what? I'm also gonna pick what we do in the shadows because I I just got caught up uh last night and I agree with everything everyone said. Bryce came over, me, him, and Ash. We just sat down, and busted through <laughs> the new episodes, and it was it was a great time. Uh, weird. I got a weird one that's old. Um, okay. The uh, uh, Fight for Your Right revisited 30 minute long YouTube video that was meant to promote the Hot Sauce Committee Part 2 from the Beastie Boys featuring Righteous Gemstone's own Jesse Gemstone, Danny McBride, along with Jack Black, along with Elijah Wood, uh, along with Seth Rogen. It's um, what is it? it it's. I don't know what it is because if it was a music video, you would think they would play an entire song, but they don't. They yeah. just, it's just this weird meditation on what the beastie boys were like. And then Will Ferrell comes from the future with Jack Black and they argue about who's the real beastie boys. It's, it's kind of terrible, but it was directed by Adam Yao and uh, it's great. It's great, and I don't know what it is, and it made me happy to watch all 30 minutes of it. It's, it is the Beastie Boys, especially this period of their career, have rightfully a lot of admirers, which means they have a lot of famous admirers, which means they have a lot of famous admirers that live in New York City uh, and or were raised in New York City, and they have a very, very complicated relationship with their early years, and so this was... The combination of both of those things. <laughs> let's let's revisit our early years in a way that we want people to think of them and we think of them, which erases the elements of our early years that we don't like, which they have been very, very vocal about. So. Also, Ben, what a what a rogues gallery of excellent comedians and Hollywood all stars, everything from uh, I, 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 I want to say Michael from The Good Place, but he's uh, Ted Danson. Ted Danson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ted Danson. Uh, uh, the entire cast of Parks and Recreation. <laughs> it's bonkers. It's like, just, just I, I, I can't explain it. I'm just happy I watched it. There was somebody in the Beastie Boys book that was talking about that. It might have been Amy Poehler that... I think so. Uh, uh, ...was talking about what a blessing it was to do it, and she really, really was into it. And then strangely veered into this, like, why didn't I get to be MCA? <laughs> this is BS. Anyway, uh, 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 yeah, I remember that when it came out, but it's, it's been a while since I've watched it. So I'll, I'll take some time out to watch it again. There we go. Yeah, the whole revisiting thing is interesting because uh, remember Spielberg went back and took all the guns out of, like, E.T.? Yep. And then Spielberg then said, I regret taking all the guns out of E.T. <laughs> it's like, I don't think we should go back and... Because I think that he realized that uh, once you do that, then it doesn't end. You know, what else are you going to fix or revisit and change? What else are you going to be expected to do? Yeah. Um, I don't know. We, we, we can spend 45 minutes talking about my, my thoughts about the Beastie Boys thoughts about their early years. So we can, we can save that for another Beastie Boys specific yeah. conversation. Andrew, you got a pick? I do have a pick. Uh, they clone Tyrone. You all seen this? I did. Uh, Heard good I, things. I, I have not. Yeah, that is on what what platform? That's on Netflix. The Netflix. Netflix. Uh, uh, how did you feel about they clone Tyrone, Andrew? Because I have oh, I, some thoughts. I really liked it. Oh, it was very funny. What did you think? Uh, I liked the first like half of it. I thought it the second half is just not as good. I think the ending is maybe not there, but the rest of it's solid. The rest of it's great. Like there's really cool sci-fi. St- suspense and thriller stuff but the end just felt kind of uh limp to me no fair enough i had fun all the way through i like i i I like sci i like urban sci-fi i like stuff where they take a premise and put into a different sort of thing uh the it's very much in the kind of like a sorry for bothering you kind of category yeah uh 
which I, I, I dug it. Jamie Foxx is great. And it was just funny because you're like, man, these are kind of caricatures. And like, yes, yes, they are. Yeah. And you're like, oh. And so. Yeah, I thought that was uh, that was well like all the production stuff, like like it's it's a it's it's really well put together uh visually as well as uh I think the comedy's great. I think like especially like when they do comedy bits, it's it's good. The timing and, and execution's really there. Yeah. Gentlemen. Yep. It's been weird. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all righty. Well, uh, good show, everybody. Let's get, uh, we'll take a short break and get ready for After Things in just a moment. Right here. Oh, let me get some music for us here. Yeah, back. Yeah, go for it. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Friday. Uh, it's Friday. It's the fourth. It's not Monday. <laughs> I swear it's not Monday. Uh, here in the Weird Things program, coming up with After Things in just a few minutes. Uh, coming up. Uh, uh, oh, I talked about this last week on After Things. Um, I don't, probably don't have an update for for the show, but um, uh, uh, the, the, the 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 marbles race that I talked about last week. Uh, the Marbles Fruit Cup that is next week. Join us here on Twitch on the 10th. Uh, it'll be for uh, Marbles LFG patrons. They'll be the ones who are entering. So there's time to get in if you want to get in. Um, but that'll be next week. And then and then Season 7, more, more Marbles will be uh, right after that. So uh, tune in on all of that. Hello, everybody. I uh, am... What did I play? Didn't I just? I just played. I just played a video game. Nobody. Huh? Nobody. Yeah, they Nobody. all left. They all I did. Really did. I tried to go early too. I know. I know. I tried to go early. Well, you didn't catch that. Yeah, there and didn't catch that. Um, how's a uh, how's a how are the how's the kingdom? Is it still crying? This kingdom's crying, y'all. It's crying. Uh, are you close to beating it? Or where you gonna get Ganondorf? It's an expansive game. Yeah. And so I played a, I played it a lot um, last weekend and a little bit this week, but I'm not I'm not grinding right. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not ripping through this. But I would say that I'm at the point where if I wanted to hustle through it, I could probably blast through the story uh, fairly quickly. But is it um, is it like Breath of the Wild where you could just go right to the end? right when you start the game it would just be way more difficult because there's not like like in breath of the wild there's no leveling up it's not like you can you can you can get powers if you go and finish the dungeons but you don't even need to do that technically to beat the game um or is there this, more of like a no there's line? a mini boss that you that doesn't trigger until you um do some of the dungeons in, until you complete all four of the you know, wind, water, lightning, yeah, earth. Oh, interesting. Temples. So, like, uh, that's interesting. I, 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 I don't know. To be told, I don't know your the answer to your question because uh, even then, maybe you just don't do the mini boss, right? Like, and you can just go and with three hearts go try to beat the final boss immediately. Because that's that's how it is in Breath of the Wild. If you go and you beat those dungeons, then those that becomes one less boss that you have to fight at the end of the game when you go to that castle to to beat it um oh really yeah. you guys are talking about oh uh, you're muted andrew amazon's original series the boys yes yeah uh you're still muted andrew if but i think hold you on that. okay hold on oh yeah hold. you helped hold. Uh, but yeah i back. Uh, welcome back I, uh, I, saved, saying, I saved a village from pirates, and now I'm helping them rebuild. I'm saying, I was saying, speaking of bosses in Breath of the Wild, I don't know if you saw the tweet from my boss. 
No. Uh, no. What did? Uh, what did? Where is he? Did, he? did he? Did he? Did he save Gerudo? His, his boyfriend introduced him to Breath of the Wild, and now, like he says, AGI is postponed by four days. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Oh no, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, sorry. Here, come on. Never mind. Come Tears on. of the Kingdom. This kingdom's crying, y'all. It's crying. Uh, all righty. Uh, you guys want to do a little after things? Yep. Yep. Okay. Then I'll count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. Which is not on a Monday, despite what Bryce Castillo would have no. to say every time he doesn't. Do <laughs> not do it again. Do not believe his lies. <laughs> I do not that. believe his lies. <laughs> write it on your. She is write it the on one your skin. We him. we moved to Fridays like six months ago. I don't know how I said. Whatever you about. say, Joey Pants. Don't believe <laughs> his lies. <laughs> Teddy. So it's time for after things. Uh, Brian, we talked a bit before in Weird Things about uh, the whole, uh, what do we call it, the LK99? Uh, the superconductor, the room temperature. Phenomenon. Oh, I, 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 man, I, I wish I was more up to date on that. Uh, is, is it, is it? <laughs> still don't know. You're up to date. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. Still... Yeah, it. we don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, when in doubt out <laughs> that yeah. seems like a safe rule great policy that is a good policy yeah well i think everybody's taking that approach for the most part although there is like a, already a meme coin but i think that there are people who are labs are trying to replicate it which is good you don't want to just doubt it and be like man moving right along and if you're involved in like you know making superconductors you might be worth like paying some attention to well, and, and there's a temptation to believe that anything this world changing can't possibly happen this fast. Um, have we yet even gotten one year into the chat GPT transformation of the world? We have not. Nope. Nope. So, so I, I'm hesitant to say no way something can change that much that fast. Whereas like I'm, I'm, I get home, I kick in the door and I'm like, children learn faster. It's all happening. Chat, chat, chat GPT will have its first fall back to school. Oh. This we, year. we have stickers that people put on their laptops at work that say low key research preview. <laughs> that's, that's what we called it. That, that was, chat that was GPT what he was. A low key research preview. We just want to do a low key research preview. That's hilarious. Of this. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Uh, that's right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait until we have something real high key. Then you guys sure, yeah. Then it. everyone, no, you're going to pee your pants in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When Open Eye says, hey, a big announcement coming, everybody. Like, exactly. <laughs> Hide under your desk. I was, uh, uh, may, this is maybe peripherally associated, but, um, last night, one of my daughters was at the right place where I wanted to share, I don't know, uh, like a Dan Harmon rap. Sure. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, and, this right uh, but, but, uh, it feels like my world is getting smaller and smaller because sure enough, I couldn't find it anywhere on YouTube. It was the, the Dr. Ken one. And, uh, and it, it seems to just not be available anymore. And it made me bummed that, and it made me wonder, um, is that, is that just a case of, you know, me getting, getting older or a structural institutional, easy to initiate takedowns is causing the number of lanes that we can explore to get less and less on platforms like YouTube. Uh, well, I think that we mm. there's there's a few things that we do not know for sure. You you were not able to find it. We do not know if it's not available. It doesn't um, look like the the actual video of it is there. The audio someone's got the audio clip, but it's not the video. It's not the video but, clip. But, but 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 what what I wanted her to see is there was like a lyric video where where there was a video aspect to it, and it was a lot of fun, and you could see what was this called? Uh, 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 Dan Harmon did a podcast called uh, Harmon Town, and and it was called uh, uh, Dr. Ken was the name of the freestyle rap that he did. He, it, it involved um, uh, somebody performing under the name of Rally Ritchie, who plays Grey Worm from uh, 
Game of Thrones, and it was just an electric moment that somebody enhanced by putting a bunch of, you know, lyrics on screen. And I'll be danged if I just couldn't find it. And it's a bummer because, mm. I'm, you know, it was fine enough to hear the audio alone, but that was a real special moment that was made better by fan efforts. And I, I, maybe, I don't want to read into a trend that doesn't exist, but I really wished I could have found it. And if I had known it was going to go away, maybe I would have saved it. Well, uh, uh, then I'm, I'm happy to announce that everything else that you love on the internet is in that same position. Yeah, but oh, it's like, my, my. like, no, I hear you. Like, I, like, like on, on, on TikTok, like there's a w weird thing where like, there's no metadata on TikTok. Like you don't post tags like you can, but most people and a lot of the most popular stuff on there isn't like SEO optimized tagged perfectly. Like it's, 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 if there's any metadata, maybe the app will do some sort of vision, uh, you know, some I machine vision to try to understand what's going on in a, in a video. But it, it is, it is really hard to find things now, you know, on, on TikTok, you kind of have to hope someone commented something similar to what you're looking for because people won't even title things. Well, and, and likewise, so. I remember that time that, uh, one of our favorite uh, 10 years ago, one of our favorite videos was this very bizarre kind of viral campaign uh, involving the phrase cat crack and, uh, the company that paid for it to be made said, Ooh, this is not a good idea. And they pulled it. And it was only one of our community who has reposted it. And at any moment it could be taken away again. And that wonderfully bizarre moment that is cat crack could, could vanish again. And it, I don't know, it just has me sort of, uh, whimsically dialed into the ephemera that of, of things, you know, the, I, I play around with AI and I'll get it to create stuff like little short stories or little conversations and stuff. And sometimes they create stuff that's really good. And I'm like, what do I do with this? I'm like, do I need to save it? It's like, I mean, if we're listening to it again, it feels it's weird because it feels like it has value, but we're living in a world where, you know, there are going to be millions of videos produced today, millions of things. And when in an AI world, it's going to be, you know, a billion things that we produce to find the two things that are going to make you laugh. I mean, you're going to get into like a crazy sort of thing, yeah. but with the human created stuff, I mean, that's, that's special and that's different. And like, yeah, that's a, that is what, you know, the, the Corey Doctoros and other people have been warning us about the more we leave it to the big tech, whatever, to mm -hmm. be the repositories for these things, yeah. the more we stand to lose. I mean, yeah, or, YouTube or, or, is going to, YouTube is going to go away one day. Yeah. Uh, and like it, everyone or not, will go away one day, Bryce. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You, you but can't, do you ever think about that, I man? Know. Do you realize? <laughs> as uh, but but you can't. You, you like when when you're the man now. Dog went down a few years ago. There was a there was a concerted campaign to try and and scrape everything off that site and save it, which was gifts. Uh, mp3s small amounts of text so it was very it was relatively easy to do but but like you said andrew like hundreds thousands of hours of video gets uploaded to youtube every day um there's there's just so much of it that i couldn't imagine anyone short of an amazon or a facebook in a position to pick up the pieces from where a youtube will eventually fail. Well, and, and we spoke mm -hmm. about this uh, over the last couple of years in, in the sequel to Sapiens, uh, Homo Deus, uh, the question of uh, the religion of dataism, D-A-T-A-ism, the idea that everything could be recorded. Like, it was heartbreaking for me to realize, oh, wait, no matter how compressed everything gets, eventually you have to convert the entire mass of planet Earth into hard drives to save everything. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a bummer to let go of things. And then, uh, unfortunately now you only have secondhand accounts. Like I can only tell you how good the particular freestyle rap was, or, you know, if, if cat crack was lost to the ages, you would only have my interpretation of it to, well, to tell you in, in the Dr. Ken situation, you would just go to that. You would have to find that episode of Harmontown, but that rap is still like, yeah, that 
edit is gone. But yeah, but like, the video, but the video I, is gone as, along with the lyrics on top of it that punched up various aspects and all that stuff. Well, you, so, yeah, that's what's, but but like. But you can go to the Harmontown website where they have the video. But podcast. that doesn't have that. that I understand that you thing. don't have the no, edit. No, Bryce, what you don't get is there was one video. All right. So it's the same thing that you're saying, but it was cut and edited and there were lyrics on top. Do you understand this, Bryce? So uh, imagine this conversation. Yeah, oh my God. But instead, <laughs> it was also just this conversation. Yeah. And then there were words, the words that I'm saying, and then. When I said words like this, <laughs> it would be larger font that would come yeah. out. It would be yeah. an H1. Or and then an you H2. loaded so that to two, YouTube. Two, two things. Two things. One now is it's gone. we have – we're at this point where we, we've created these bigger, bigger media file types, right? And so, like, story and video has gotten a lot cheaper. Remember YouTube launched? Remember YouTube launched? It was amazing because there was, like, what was the – what was the daily news tech show like rocket something rocket boom rocket boom. Mm. rocket boom and it was like wow like man they got the money to be able to serve that much video like that was that was a big deal at the time because back in the day ain't nobody providing you like free video hosting to let as many people watch your video as possible which now like it, we just take for granted and so we're at the other we're at the point now we're like yeah you can just upload stuff and youtube was like YouTube had to get bought by Google because Google, you know, was the only one that could really handle that kind of bandwidth. But mm -hmm. I think we're reaching peak population, like a peak number of population of people. I think we're going to be able to be cheap to keep everything that anybody's made because we're going to get to a point where you can only make your video file format so big uh, before you just start by necessity using compression and AI stuff and all that. So I do think we're going to get to a point where we will be able to keep everything. And because it's just the biggest problem now is that more and more people are producing, but there's, it's like, it's like they talk about like uh, uh, the idea that, that, that kind of the silly sort of thing they say in transportation, like they call it like induced demand. Like, well, if you make the, if you make the freeways bigger, then you're going to create more demand. Like, okay, there's X people here. There's X people here. You're never going to exceed that plus that population. What happens is, mm -hmm. People will decide to drive because you can get there a little bit better, or you're 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 meeting uh, you're you're meeting demand that just has been existing for a while. So I think what I'm trying to say is like I don't I don't buy anything. We won't be able to record anything. I think we will. I think we we will be able to record it. Uh, I'm not counting for AI generated stuff and all that, but for human stuff, I think we will. But who will do it? Who will care? Well, and and maybe the part that I need to let go of is the asp the idea that it should be free. Like, hey, man, uh, you, know, you want that cat crack video? I got it. It'll be three. You know, now we're into Lexus Nexus territory or, or you know, archived, uh, archived news stuff or whatever. And I mean, is that. Is there there what is there? I mean, yeah. Uh, what, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with it. I just noticed it and felt it is all I'm saying. No, oh, I, yeah. I, I've been playing with, I use Rewind. I've been trying this. Have you guys seen this? Uh, you heard about this. On my VHS? What is Rewind? Yes, Bryce. Rewind in your VHS. Oh, you did tell us about this. Rewind.ai. Yes. So what Rewind is, is basically it captures your screen every now and then. And so basically, if you want to go back and search for stuff, like I'm going to open up Rewind and say, like, uh, I'm going to ask something stupid and embarrassing here. Um, did I actually have it running? Let's see if I have it running. Well, you know, uh, what, in, a, in a similar manner while you're getting that set up, I, uh, I downloaded a clipboard manager the other day. Um, and it is great. It's incredible. It is the thing I didn't even realize I was missing. Um, you, you ever you ever copy something? Hit Control C, Brian. Yeah, but but, the, but my my problem is mm -hmm. is I can only Control C one thing at a time. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. Is uh -uh. is this is this? Oh, oh oh oh! What about if you had an app that remembered everything you ever copied and it remembered it on all of your devices? Oh. Or if you're like me, like someone who makes video games by scrape. Or, podcast games by scraping the internet you can just copy things in a row and then paste it in a row like uh it's a it's a very small thing and 
I only found maybe one great option on Mac, but it's it's awesome. It's really cool. Like it does seem weird to have something like always looking at your at your clipboard, and you can give it rules and stuff. But it's 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 I, I have to imagine it will probably be very similar to Andrew's experience here with Rewind in that you can just go back through your history and see. Oh yeah, I was looking at that. Oh yeah, I might want. Yeah, that. you know um, that like, it's it. You might. I don't know if you haven't thought about a clipboard manager, consider it. I think it's a great suggestion. I used to have a thing like that for that was local to Mac. Yeah. Where it, it just expanded my copy. So it just remember like the last 10 things that I copied. Oh, nice. So it just had a little bit of that utility. But it was very, very helpful. And I, I needed it uh, in in the blogging. The blogging era. It, yeah. So for Rewind, basically what it does, everybody, is that it, it basically takes screen captures of what you've been doing. And then you can basically search. It'll search the text. It converts that to a searchable text. Mm, wow, um, which and is pretty cool. Uh, I think we 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 we, we, we looked at this a, a, a couple months ago, right? Yeah, yeah. This, this looks familiar. So, uh, it, yeah, how I long have you been using this, Andrew? I added it like a week ago. Yeah, are you interfacing I haven't with it? Used it a lot yet? You know, I don't know. I don't know yet how I feel about it, but I do like the idea that I could see. You know, whether it's something that gets Sherlocked or becomes more comprehensive, like Brian mentioned the videos, like, yeah, it would be kind of nice to have something like, yeah, like save every piece of media that I, I consume so I can go back to it. And I would say, yeah, especially in this, my belief is that there are different generations have different ideas about permanence on the internet. And we come from a generation that had a tremendous lack of permanence growing up in a period without the internet. And the thing that we found fascinating about it was never delete an email, never delete a picture, never delete a video. And and this leads to what Brian was saying of, of feeling kind of soft betrayed that the internet has broken what he thought was an unspoken promise to keep the Dr. Ken video up forever. So when you are old and gray, you can look back and say, he is doing that to the mamas again. Right. Uh, where, there is a generation for which has grown up with the internet and therefore has grown up with, you know, uh, effectively infinite permanence and says, no, I find infinite permanence to be a burden. Right. I want to manicure. I, I, I deserve I want to curate. The, the right I want to be to, forgotten. I want, yeah. Well, I mean, but even beyond that, like, although that, that does build into it, like it is bad internet hygiene to leave all of your, stuff out on the lawn we yeah. should be beautifying our spaces we should be trimming things to to be exactly who we are right now as opposed to what we look at it as yeah i mean here's some dumb foot this is when i was in my pinwheel phase look at my pinwheels like we, that's, we've that's, that's yeah, yeah. Oh, no. we like we've abstracted the idea of publishing and the internet is an eternal publishing machine right yeah like your tweets are always there and if you look at the way we look at like copyright, untrue, uh, untrue. Every, every nobody's tweets are there. Or, so your, your exes, exes. your uh, <laughs> your your exes uh, are technically you always saying that all the time when someone loads up that web page because you've published it. Like there's we we've we've gotten away from the idea of publishing for all these very specific for these more user centric use cases right post your photos post your albums post this share that um and mm, i don't think it's insidious but i just think that uh sometimes we've 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 forgotten that what you're doing on the internet is publishing things and publishing things things stick around um and and i think now we don't want that as much you know it's yeah it's a it's a weird thing because like we went from like, hey, hey, world, take a look at it. And the world did. And they're like, oh, well, I didn't know that if I put this in front of everybody that everybody would be able to comment on it. You know, I, I want to control this. It's like, okay, maybe the internet's not for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got to find. So the only place that I would know to find the Dr. Ken video mm. is at some point I posted on, I believe, the community television show subreddit. Mm-hmm the you need to see Dan Harmon rapping and then the person who posted it said uh 
no, I don't. <laughs> and then I responded, well, I guess we found whose mama Dan <laughs> did that to. <laughs> Dan encountered. Uh, and and uh, uh, I got him. It was a huge win for me. <laughs> and so and, it and has to be somewhere in my Reddit post history. And I am I am trying to find it because if it... If, if this is the link that I think it is, then we've got a video not available uh, error. Oh. Uh, which is... Video video isn't available anymore is... What was the title, Bryce? Is uh, when you get deleted. Um, I've... Uh, Harmontown, Dr. Ken Rapp featuring Jacob Anderson, a.k.a. Grey Worm Better Audio. From Epic Master. Um, so yeah, that that like I think that error means it's been deleted, not just privated. Um, mm. But I wonder. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I feel like we all are wrestling with an encounter with death. <laughs> like, oh, things can be taken away from us. Things are, you know, mm-hmm. there's there's there are many deaths in life, and and this is three. this was this <laughs> was done for you. Was, yeah, no, this it, was a it, small it, death. It was a real. Yeah, it death. was a it was a real bummer because the, I the thought absence I don't mean to of you know. yeah, yeah, mm. buried under a puzzling decision to share this with your family. <laughs> oh no no no! I mean, it was only one of my two daughters, uh, which, as you both know, which one it would be. <laughs> Actually, you have three dollars. Daughters, I think. Yeah, one of the two eligible <laughs> daughters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it is. It is. It really is strange. And and compared to something like okay, this is gonna be a, a weird one here. But compared to like archaeology, yeah, like we, we are able to find stuff in the ground. Like it's it can get preserved there. But I wonder if like the digital nature, the the ones and zeros of it all, mean how much stuff is permanently gone right some stuff is we we could find right if you're talking about text and maybe it's on the internet archive or the wayback machine yeah um but yeah it there could just be a lot of stuff that is permanently gone that's that's a a bummer i like that we're dealing with the concept of death here yeah yeah well everything is life and everything is death yeah yeah Right. Sometimes, sometimes beautiful things are sad when we realize they will end. Exactly. Song lyric. I, I, I was there was a uh, article on Hacker News the other day about somebody trying to track down the original Netscape Navigator logo with the little comet. Oh yeah, the with the gift the, back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. And and it you know, wasn't like it was just an automatic. This thing was saved somewhere. It was basically like one of the people like worked on Netscape was able to provide them the actual. They, they tried to lo- download the uh, uh, file, like the actual like browser, and inside of there they found uh, that was missing. It was that was taken wow. out. Wow. And so it's one of those. Yeah, it's like kind of this curious sort of thing where finally we're able to track it down. But yeah, like things that are in front of like. Hundreds of millions of people saw this thing, saw yeah. it, and then it's just like, where does it live? And that's you know, a big part of why Brewster Cowell tried the you know the Internet Archive, which has done an amazing job to sort of save things for us, um, yeah. because you know without that, like so much more history would just have gone down the memory hole. Yeah, yeah. There's a a curious. Um, uh, is I think we've talked about it, and at, at the very least, we're in a small enough group that I hope this doesn't come back to haunt me, but. Um, you know, the early days of scam school, all of the early footage, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't own. And I know at some point they had all of the three camera shoots, all of the original audio or whatever, but revision three needed the space. And so they just wiped it and it was gone. So then, uh, now what is the highest fidelity version of it? And so if, if I were to purchase or inherit it or whatever, uh, the 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 simplest thing would be to download all the videos from YouTube. However, those would be compressed and then compressed again and so on. Whereas and maybe they could be enhanced uh, via AI. But what I would probably do is, uh, if I were in that situation, do kind of a full-throated, who has old computers when you yeah. downloaded the high-definition feed direct from uh, iTunes uh, yeah. because those will be the closest 
to the best versions that we would ever ever be able to find. But uh, uh, but but you know, legally, there's there's you no. You should probably put the word out on that just just for just for safety. I mean, I mean, if if somebody has them, great. Yeah, there's only one way to find out. Uh, begging on the internet. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing I'm going to do as soon as this done on on the Harmonton subreddit. Uh, that, where's we're, Dr. Ken? Raise the alarm. <laughs> There's a community. Yeah, actually. Uh, that's a good name for a show. Raise Dr. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so I have a, a pick. Uh, okay. uh, we talked about it yesterday on the bonus podcast for uh, 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 Great Night. But last night we watched the sequel to Airplane, Airplane 2. Yeah. Turns out both of them pretty good. Airplane 2, not quite as good as Airplane. No. Nope. But it was enough that I kind of wanted to nudge and see if the girls has it been long enough that we can enjoy the naked gun that's what i want to know this, 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 this is a teaser there. hey nordberg uh <laughs> yeah no I, I i don't know you I mean, don't know so that's the next step they liked airplane and they liked airplane 2 the sequel yes and so now it's it's the naked gun Frank kick, Drebin kick, 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 and, 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 and uh, a certain, a certain Heisman trophy winner, mm-hmm. uh, who, uh, by the way, Nordberg, Nordberg, hilarious. Like he's very funny. In that's, that's the like, other are, part. Are the other part about it is to that divorce he, the art from the artist. Oh, like <laughs> the, the him trying to Nordberg, trying to like sneak through like, uh, uh, that, that, that wooded room. And he just does all of the physical comedy. Yes. So he's like getting his fingers caught in the, uh, 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 uh the, the windows and, oh my God. It's so like, he's truly, would, would, would it be kinder for me to just, what movies have, has he done recently? <laughs> Not time for a comeback. <laughs> Would would, uh, would it be a kindness for me to just in, get them to watch the movie and never reveal who they saw? At, do they at, have thoughts about O.J. Simpson at all? I don't know that they, they do. They probably I can't, at, I can't imagine. I did. did I did one of these like L.A. murder walking tours where they take you through places like the Cecil Hotel and all that stuff. And it's fascinating that the Black Dahlia murders and everything mm-hmm. is fascinating by there. At one point, they take you to the street and they say, "Hey." Uh, you know, O.J. Simpson was shooting a movie here called like a Navy SEAL movie. And if you take a look over here is the knife shop. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And it's the shop where he bought the knife. He was on the set here, walks over there and is like, hmm, I think I'm going to get myself a knife. Wow. And so that's if he did it, if he did it. If Fun fact, he was on the board of directors of Swiss Army at the time, too. And that did not get out. Oh, wow. Hmm. That's that's fascinating. Allegedly. Oh. Anyway, my, my, my pick is Airplane and Airplane 2, the sequel. Thanks. Uh, I got a pick. Yeah. Uh, I was talking about this earlier. Uh, the clipboard manager that I, I uh, started using on the Mac is called Paste. Um, it's very cool. I think it uh, it it's very simple. Uh, just when you copy stuff, it figures it out. It puts it in the cloud. So if you want to see it on your phone, you can do that as well. Um, it keeps track of stuff. It's it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it is a subscription, but I want to say it's like two or three dollars a month, and then it's a little cheaper if you do the annual. Um, but I really dig it, and I didn't I didn't I didn't expect to want a like really full featured clipboard manager, um, but I totally see. How you're you're, would, you're filling out these features. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. And and you know I, but between the podcast, show notes, publishing stuff, like you do kind of, it it's just more helpful to copy multiple things. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my recommendation is uh paste on the, uh Mac OS and the iPhone and stuff. Uh, let me give you a pic of a thing that I use. Almost every single day. It is a program for the Macintosh uh, Audio Hijack Pro. Um, it is the the thing that I use the most when I'm recording sounds off the internet for podcast production. I use it to record all of my audio locally, all of my audio via Zoom. Uh, it is intensely robust, uh, but... 
you know, Rogue Amoeba has been doing this stuff for a while. I mean, I remember using, I don't know if Soundflower was them or that was just a standard that they built this on top of, but I've been using stuff like this for quite a while. And, uh, you know, just one of those things where, you know, anything that I do, if I need to record it for broadcast, I use it. If I need to record stuff for notes, I use it. It's just there, helpful, good, small, yellow, different. It is Audio Hijack Pro. Nice. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Audio Hijack seems cool. I haven't needed to do that much on the Mac, but I use a voice meter uh, to do a similar thing. But even voice meter is very kind of complicated. Audio Hijack, they do. They spend a lot of time making that seem pretty simple. It's, yeah, pretty drag and drop. Andrew, you got any picks for us? Uh, my pick is... Go out and enjoy the beautiful outdoors. Oh, get um, a little, get a little get, fresh air. Touch some grass. Exactly. Uh, you know. If it's if it's alive, it's 103 degrees. But oh, but God. a lot of the grass is is dead. But most of it, some of it's alive. So touch yeah. that to let let. <laughs> so you let it know. Good job. <laughs> there well, we go. It's been after. Here we go. <laughs> All righty, everybody. Thank you for joining Dr. us here. Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken. I mean, okay, so, so you experienced, oh, like, mama. I, I watched oh, you experience the frustration man. that I was having. Bitty bop, like, bop, bitty bop. Yeah, I was, uh, I was just trying to find that, that comment I made, and I realized it had to be in the community subreddit because nobody in the Harmontown subreddit would yell at me for posting the Dr. Ken. I think it might have been them talking about the Dean rap in community. And I'm like, well, you Barack need to see Obama the Obama is scared yeah. of me. He's afraid of me. <laughs> uh, anyway. Okay. Well, that'll do it for the show today, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank yep. you to the ghost for making it in. Uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I have to go back to packing boxes. Uh, okay. uh, thank you, everybody. We'll be back another time. Yep. Bye, Andrew. See ya. Bye. And everyone else. Bye.